Good evening, everyone. It's my privilege to welcome each of you tonight to the 2022 eighth grade blessing ceremony. How do they look? <laughs> I want to just take a second to thank each and every parent and host parent um, and just thank you for choosing a Christian education and one that has been formed and based on a biblical worldview, how important that is today. Thank you to each of the friends and the family for being here to show your support and to show your love. And thank you to the teachers and staff that are spread throughout this room for the investment and the time that you have made, not only academically, but spiritually, into the lives of each one seated up here tonight. The blessing ceremony is a very important time in each one of your lives, and it marks the beginning of another. You have been prepared and are now equipped to begin the next important step of your chapter in your journey. After tonight, you're high school students. Doesn't that sound good? I remember when I was your age, I just wanted to get older and older and older. And as you get older and older and older, you wish you would have all slowed down and you would have enjoyed all of it. As you get older, I'm sure one day you're going to look back and it's probably not likely that you're going to remember all of the math concepts or the equations, or the language diagramming, or the proper sentence formation. All of these things are so important, but it's not really those things that we end up remembering years later. I think what you're going to remember most of all is how much people loved you. I hope and pray as you look back, you remember how much the teachers here at Atlanta Christian loved and invested in you and how much time they gave to each one of you. That will be the things that I believe you're going to remember the most. I pray that the seeds that have been sown into your hearts and into your lives, that each one of those will take root and grow. And one day, I pray that you will just do great things for the kingdom of God. Many of you are doing those things already. Though you're young, I still see great fruit coming forth from many of your lives. Students, high school is a brand new, fresh start. It's the time when your GPA and all of your grades really start to matter. But it's also the beginning of another stepping stone that's leading into your future. Proverbs 16.3 says, If you commit your way to the Lord... Test, test. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's why we have Lee in the back. Proverbs 16.3, let me say it again. Commit your way to the Lord and whatever you do and your plans will succeed. I pray tonight that you decide to be diligent and committed to your future learning. That you stand firm in your commitment to following God regardless of the, what this world tries to persuade you to do. And that you remember the importance of a strong start, the importance of persevering even when things are tough, and that you remember to run the race ahead with endurance and to finish well. I encourage you and challenge you as you enter high school to be a godly leader, to be a positive role model to those around you, so when they look at you, they see Jesus. Congratulations to each of you for successfully completing middle school. We rejoice with you. We look forward to seeing how God uses you in the future, and with God... We wish the best for you in your future endeavors. God bless. Okay. Okay. Um, at this time, we're going to ask a few of the class to come up for the pledges. I need David O'Donnell, Sophia Costello, Victoria Dade, and Amelia Deanna. Everyone, please stand. Thank you. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pledge to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior who is King in this dance. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Um, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you that we could come to this ceremony today. And thank you for the school year, that we go to a school that we can worship and praise you freely. And I pray that we have a good ceremony and that we have a good summer and strengthen our relationships with you. Amen. Amen. It is a tradition at Atlanta Christian School to have the high school valedictorian do an address to encourage our eighth grade students who are moving into high school. The 2022 class valedictorian is Elizabeth Alford. Elizabeth has been a student at Atlanta Christian School through her elementary, middle school, and high school years. She was a part of the National Honor Society, the JV basketball team, student council, worship, and drama productions. Elizabeth is planning to study nursing at Cedarville University, and she is the recipient of the Jonathan B. DiMario Scholarship, the Egg Harbor Township Fire Department Scholarship, the Mayor Hodson Service Award, the PTF Scholarship, and the American Red Cross. Please join me in welcome, welcoming Elizabeth Alford. Good evening, parents, friends, students, faculty, and staff. We are here tonight to celebrate and honor the accomplishments that this eighth grade class has achieved. Within this next year, they will now begin by moving on from middle school to the next part of their lives as freshmen in high school. I can firmly say that I am extremely proud of each one of you and am praying for you as this next phase of your life begins. Through your guys' middle school years, I have gotten to personally know some of you and can say without a doubt in my mind that you will be future generational curse breakers as well as leaders to the under and upperclassmen. I do not know if you guys can truthfully comprehend the influence and impact you have on the students as well as the teachers during the school year. Each of you carries a generous and caring heart that many people would long to have at such a young age. Not only that, but each of you continues to carry an attitude that reflects the light of Christ in all that you do. With this in mind, tonight I am not here to present to you with a long speech, but instead give each of you three helpful points for the beginning of high school that I wish I had known at your age. Point number one being that each year of high school that you complete is just as important as your last. This is a fresh start and new beginning for all of you. Freshman year is the time when colleges begin to look at your academic achievements as well as how well-rounded of a student you are. Colossians 3, 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You each have to keep in mind who it is that we serve and to do anything that we are given, whether it be a paper, project, test, quiz, or homework assignment to the absolute best of your ability. He will honor you in return because of this hard work and effort that you put into everything. He does not call us to be perfect. However, he does call us to be willing in that all that we do to honor and glorify him. Point number two is to not strive to be the most popular or to have the most friends in class. Popularity means nothing in Christ's eyes. He instead looks at your heart and your heart alone. Let your hearts continue to reflect what has been taught to us in scripture and reflect the love that God has for us. As it says in Proverbs 27, 19, as water reflects the face, so the heart reflects a person. This is a verse that I challenge myself to complete daily and challenge you to do the same. 
Having a heart of Christ will outwardly reflect to others in how you act and what you say. Even in the Bible, God does not use the most popular people to further his kingdom. He used people like Moses, who had a speech impediment, David, who was a shepherd as well as a murderer, Naomi, who was a widow, Peter, who denied Christ three times, Paul, who was a Pharisee, who persecuted Christians before coming to be one himself, the Samaritan woman, who was divorced multiple times, and Martha, who was worried and anxious about everything. He uses the most unqualified and unpopular people in a country and turns them into qualified people to be examples and to further his kingdom. When we get to heaven one day and stand before God, the popularity and fame will not matter. For the Lord looks at the heart and what you did here on earth to further his kingdom. The third and final point is to not be timid or scared of upperclassmen. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. It is my hope and prayer that as you begin high school, you will be leaders and have the authority of Christ within you to show everyone. Just because you are younger than someone does not mean you can't influence them in some way. Our theme verse this year was Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, which says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. My prayer for all of you as you move on to the next part of your life is to personally spend time alone with God in the word to bolden and deepen your faith. For when these roots are planted, they become immovable in times of trial and uncertainty. Show all others what it means to have a faith that is deeply rooted and one that can move mountains. These three points I want each of you to carry with you throughout all years of high school. Each point contains so much information that will help strengthen and build in your faith in Christ. As your high school journey begins, I encourage and pray that you will each build up your faith in Christ, for he is the one who will be by your side through anything. Be verbally unashamed of the gospel and the words Jesus spoke, even if it is not what your friends or people around you are doing. Do not compromise yourself as a person or your beliefs for someone or something else. And finally, honor God in all that you do. I will continue to be praying for each of you as you move on to the next big step of your life, and I can't wait to see what God is going to do in each of your futures using the different talents and unique gifts he has blessed each of you with. To all members of the future graduating class of 2026, congratulations on completing middle school and faithfully moving forward to the next part of your lives. Thank you. This is a very special time for the students. Each year we ask faculty members to share some thoughts, some encouragement with them. This year there are two teachers who became very close to these students. They were their homeroom teachers and they look forward to speaking with you. The first teachers are teachers who have been a part of the school for the last few years teaching 7th and 8th grade um, algebra and pre-algebra. He's been an eighth grade homeroom teacher this year and he loves to spend time with the students. Mr. George Dixon. Good evening. Parents, guardians, guests, faculty, and soon to be ninth grade students, welcome. It is my pleasure to be here tonight and to speak to you. I want to first thank the parents and the guardians for allowing us to educate your children in Christian education. It's been a pure joy. I've loved it. And it's been a wonderful year, filled with spiritual, educational, and emotional growth. And I know that there are many exciting years ahead for you. Throughout the book of Psalms, the writers give God praise for his awesome power, his greatness, his love, his compassion and grace, and his forgiveness. In all these actions, God blessed his people, and there was the expectation that they would bless others. God said to the new nation of Israel in Genesis 12:2. 
that I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. And I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. God did not only bless the nation of Israel, but also led them to be a blessing to others. Students, tonight, we recognize that you have been blessed and continue to be blessed by God's hand. He is an awesome and gracious God. He has given this school and its wonderful caring teachers and staff to inspire you and to guide you. We have learned math and Bible, civics and science, arts, Spanish, so many other subjects, finance. And he has integrated all of that with biblical truth. And that is an awesome thing. John 1 tells us that God has made all things. And without him, nothing has been made that has been made. This means that all subjects are from God. And the real wonder about, wonder about this creation is not only did he create them, but he sustains them and causes them to grow. For example, in science and math, we continually come up with new concepts and new, new findings, um, adding to our knowledge and our capabilities. God has blessed us here at ACS, and I pray that you will bless others with God's love. So how do we do this? How do we bless others and honor God with the blessings he has given us? Well, I'd like to explore three different things. They're quick. Number one, worship God continually. Don't be afraid to praise God openly. Sing his praises, shout his praises, raise your hand and voices in worship. Give God glory for the blessings that you have received. Here at ACS, we have that opportunity at least one time during our, our chapel time. Praising God humbles us. It helps soften our hearts. And God's blessing will shine through you. Second, be a witness. Take the news of God's glory to others. Be proud and rejoice in the Lord, as Paul tells us in Philippians 3.1. So many people in our world do not know God's love and grace, and they need to hear that and see that through you. Be the hands, feet, and voice for God. And remember, many times your actions speak louder than your words. Philippians 2.5 says that in, in all our relationships with one another, we are to have the mindset of Christ Jesus. Your words and actions need to honor God. The mission trip to the, that, the schools, the, that the school takes each Easter vacation is one su such opportunity to witness for Christ. But there are so many more. Look for those opportunities. Lastly, number three, be continually in prayer. Prayer changes things in your lives. God wants you to speak with him. Seek his forgiveness continually. Thank him. Praise him. And don't be afraid to ask him to meet your needs. Ephesians 6.18 tells us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. God loves to hear our prayers, and he is waiting. Students, it has been a joy to be your teacher this year, and I'm going to miss you. Please come and visit my classroom every now and then. Yes, we did have difficult times, and there's frustration sometimes in math, but overall it was a great experience, and I have seen you grow in knowledge and maturity. Thank you for being a blessing in my life and at times stretching me to be better. Some of you have told me that you're going on a different path than ACS, but I pray that whichever path that you take, that you will continually stand up for Christ. I pray God that would go with you and you would be grounded in Christ. I love you all and I wish you the best. Have a wonderful summer. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Our second speaker is Mrs. Amy Parker. Mrs. Parker teaches middle school social studies and a high school concentration class. The other, she's the other eighth grade homeroom teacher and is actively involved in the school community and can be found at many of the students' events and activities. Mrs. Amy Parker. I have props. Not really. I came prepared. If you know, you know. Greetings, parents, staff members, and I am really going to try hard not to cry, but no promises. Um, this is an extra special eighth grade year for me because not only am I one of your children's teacher, 
I'm a fellow parent. My kid is up here too. So, um, and my baby, <laughs> my youngest. So, pray for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, this has been an honor, like Mr. Dixon said, it truly has been a pleasure and an honor to be a teacher for these wonderful students. They have such varied personalities and gifts and talents, and it has been such an exciting time of watching them grow and develop their skills. I recently had my students share some of their favorite memories from this year, and so I thought I'd share a few of my own with them, and since y'all know I don't teach standing still, get ready. Tech team's gonna love me. So, first of all, Jesus take the wheel, which I said so often that one of my students painted it on a plaque for me to keep in my classroom. I got to the point I didn't have to say it anymore, I just pointed. Thank you, Lydia. Love my plaque, love my plaque. So, a few more favorite memories. The absolute cutthroat competition when we reviewed using Book It. Crypto hack was a big favorite. They are ruthless against each other, let me tell you. Chloe as Wendy and Peter Pan, one of my fun favorite memories. Amelia's teeny tiny handwriting, so neat. I had to pull out reading glasses every time. Loved it. Someday, someday I'll have hair like videos. It might be in heaven. It's gonna be in heaven, but someday, someday that's my goal. Yelling Marcus Anderson's name every morning. I have no idea how it started, but now it's a tradition. Every morning, right? Every morning. Even when I see you not at school, right? Like at the park, yep. Every time. Jericho. Where you at, Jericho? Hey, Jericho. Which hand is it better to write with? Neither. It's better to write with a pencil. <laughs> now, I have to give you a little bit of context. Every day for like the first, I don't know, the whole semester, Jericho came in with a dad joke to tell me every day. So I searched. Hopefully you haven't heard that one. I looked hard. Um, Skylar, Maddie, Sophia, Adley, Layla, what are you going to add to the purple stew? Another favorite, <laughs> another favorite memory. The absolute horror and disbelief of some of my homeroom girls at realizing that I have not seen the movie Mean Girls in its entirety. They threatened a viewing party at my house. I'm not sure if I should be excited and start cleaning or scared that maybe they know where I live. Calvin and Logan begging every day for a mint off my desk. Every day. I have more. Come see me after. Victoria's daily hugs and holding that Bible high every day in homeroom for the pledge. Watching new friendships form, watching old friendships get stretched and sometimes broken and then repaired. Watching these students stand up in front of their peers and lead worship in chapel. That's a favorite memory. Seeing some of my kids realize that they're struggling, put the hard work in, and then seeing them realize their success and their excitement when they see the results of that work. Having students come in my room and ask me to pray with them, that was huge. That was probably the best part of my whole year. So what do I say to this class? I mean, you already know you're my favorite eighth graders. Don't tell anyone that's a secret. You're also my only eighth graders, but we won't talk about that. So one of the things that we've talked about a lot the past few years with you guys is identity, and yep, we're gonna talk about that again tonight. So every new thing comes in threes, apparently you have three speakers and they're all giving you three points. So here you go. Here are some things I hope you remember. Number one, know who you are. Know who you are. Middle school is a huge time for students trying to figure out who they're going to be. What are you going to do when you grow up? What kind of person are you going to be? One of the things I heard recently from my classroom neighbor, Mr. Lewis, was that you will never truly know who you are until you know who he is. Genesis 1.27 says that God created mankind in his own image. Press in close to Jesus, my sweet students. By learning more about him and building your relationship with him, you learn more about yourself and who he created you to be. You are exactly how God wanted you to look and what he wanted you to be like. The Bible tells us that as God finished creating the world in Genesis 1.31, he saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Ladies and gents, you were created 
by God, designed by God, and he thinks that you are very good. So number one, know who you are. Number two, stay out of the drama. Drama is ever-present in middle school, and I wish I could say that it magically disappears when you get to high school or even adulthood, but the truth is that drama is always going to be around. Don't get swept into the gossip or into the trap of comparing yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of joy. Someone will always be smarter, prettier, a better athlete, or more talented than you, and that's okay. This is, again, where knowing who you are in Jesus helps. God used Moses to speak to Pharaoh. That's so fun that Elizabeth mentioned that. God used Moses to speak to Pharaoh even though Moses stuttered. I'm sure there were way better speakers among the Hebrew people, but God specifically chose Moses. Can you imagine if the Israelites had started talking about Moses' stuttering problem behind his back? Imagine Moses finds out and just gives up on trying to fulfill the call God had placed on him. The Israelites might have never made it out of Egypt. Many times God not only uses our gifts and talents, but our weaknesses as well. So let's not get caught up in our differences and use them to divide us, but let's celebrate them and what God can do through them. And number three, like Mr. Dixon said, you are loved. First and foremost, you are loved by God. His love for you is so great that he looked at you and said, I'm going to send my son to die for Adley, to die for Gabriella, to die for Hazel, for you. He didn't want you to have to spend an eternity without him. You are also so very loved by the families that are all represented here. They have encouraged and supported you and disciplined when needed to make sure you learn how to be young men and women of great character and reputation. And you are loved by your teachers. I hope you know that. We have prayed over you, talked with you, prayed with you, and tried to help you navigate the world of building good work habits, learning content, navigating friendships, and developing a deeper personal relationship with Christ. I know your job as a student is to learn, but I learned so much just from you. I will miss you incredibly next year, and I hope that if you're returning, you pop your head in my doorway and say hello. Make amazing new memories, and don't forget what I told you at the very beginning, the very first day of school. Once you're in my class, you're one of my kids forever. Go do great things, always vote, always vote, and never forget that I love you, and my door is always open. Congratulations. There are several awards, and now's the time we're going to make a presentation of awards to the 8th grade students. Um, I ask you to uh, come forward when I call your names, uh, and Mrs. Oblin will help as far as handing out the certificates. The first awards we're going to call are the honor roll for the 2021-22 school year. That, those are students who had a 3.5 GPA or higher for the whole school year. So I'm going to ask you to come forward. Calvin Costello, Marley O'Dell, David O'Donnell, and Chloe Raymond. Thank you. The next group is highest honors. These are students who have a 3.8 GPA or higher for the school year. There's a little larger group, so they'll probably have to stand down on the bottom across the front. I'll call them and just come up when I call you. Justin Basso. <laughs> Amelia Deanna. Sonia Elliott. Caden Kim. Gabriella Goodwin, Lydia McCarthy, Rally Murphy, Adley Palermo,
Elliot Parker. Austin Salcedo. Benjamin Smith. Jericho Thomas. And Anya Welsh. Okay, you can return to your seats. We have some awards for the highest um, average in the subject, um, and I'm going to group them because there are just a few students. For the highest average in Bible, Honors Language Arts, Integrated Science, Social Studies, and Alge Honors Algebra 1, Gabriella Goodwin. Not yet. Okay. Go again. You can go ahead. Highest average in CP language arts and in CP algebra one, Benjamin Smith. Oops. You missed your picture. <laughs> Just face the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> the highest grade point average in physical education, Sophia Costello and Jericho Thomas. The highest overall average for the entire 8th grade class, she's going to have to come back up again, Gabriella Goodwin. The next two awards are ones that are nominated by the, uh, the teachers of the students and, and also voted on by them. The first one is the Citizenship Award. This is awarded to the student who best displayed a spirit of service to the others and to the school and has consistently displayed Christ-likeness in all areas of their personal and academic life. This year's Citizenship Awards go to Elliot Parker and Adley Palermo. The next award is called the Compass Award. This is awarded to the students who have consistently displayed the fruits of the Spirit in their personal and spiritual life. This year, the awards go to Lydia McCarthy and Jericho Thomas. At this time, I'm honored to invite Mrs. Pam Hitchner forward to present the Physical Education Awards. Last year at least dropped on the ground. I don't want to do that again. Congratulations, eighth graders, for a great athletic year. You led your, uh, our teams to four championships. And uh, yes, 
And I made sure they got up this morning with honors. They're up there so you can enjoy them. I was really proud of you. So at this time, I'm going to give out the Atlanta Christian Physical Fitness Awards. Um, the students are tested in sit-ups, pull-ups, speed, uh, flexibility, and endurance. To earn the National Fitness Award, they need to, um, to make it in the 50th percentile in all of those areas. And then even higher than that is the Presidential Fitness Award, and that would be they're in the 80th percentile, which is hard. It's difficult. So I need a little help here. Okay. That's for later. So if they receive the National Award, they will receive a certificate. That would be good, yeah. We'll start with the girls, and you come on up here and stay up here when we um, announce the boys as well, because we like to get pictures. Sonia Elliott. <laughs> Maddie Neal. <laughs> Kayla Shank. Adley Palmer, Chloe Wyman, Anya Welch, <laughs> Stephanie Valdez, <laughs> Dariana Ortiz, Molly O'Dell, Lydia McCarthy, Gianna Flynn, Amelia Diana, Victoria Dodd, and Hazel Bergen, well done, and now for the boys, National Award, starting with Caden Kim, David O'Donnell, Graham Schlemmer, Jericho Thomas, and Robert Susser. Well done, guys. May as well stay up here while we announce the presidential. Okay, so if they earn the presidential, uh, once again, thank you. Should they sit? Okay, you guys can sit down. Well done. Proud of you. There's a lot of them. So for the presidential awards, for the girls, we receive a medal. We have, we have Sophia Costello, <laughs> Michaela Cabbage, Skylar Shivers. Um, for our boy, we just have one, and it's Calvin Costello. Now we have a special award to give. Each year the athletic department uh, gives the Cougar Award to one boy and one girl in eighth grade. The definition of this award is in recognition of outstanding Christian character, leadership, responsibility, and commitment to athletics. Two other criteria criteria are that they have to play at least two sports and they need to be returning to a Christian school. And that's because this is also a scholarship, and that scholarship is that the athletic department pays for one full varsity sport for you to play your freshman year. So um, the young lady chosen, and, and all the coaches write on this. So this has been voted on by all the coaches in the school. 
So our young lady this year is Gianna Flynn. And then uh, our young man is David O'Donnell. At this time, I'm going to ask Mrs. Terry Vogel to come forward. Um, she's going to be presenting the PTF Scholarship Awards. Good evening, everyone. The first um, presentation I'd like to make Oops, what did I drop? Is not the PTF scholarship. This is on behalf of the Parent Teacher Fellowship. We recognize a special group of people. These 10 students all have one thing in common. They have been enrolled continuously at ACS from kindergarten through eighth grade. This is quite an accomplishment. It is a testimony to the fact that their parents have realized the importance of a Christ-centered education from a very young age. We often hear that a Christian education is an investment in eternity, which I believe wholeheartedly. As a matter of fact, my husband and I just made our last tuition payment on June 1st after 27 years of paying tuition. <laughs> it's kind of like your last mortgage payment. Now that's not to scare you, because when I read this to my husband, and I told him the amount of money that we paid, he said, please don't say that. <laughs> You're going to scare parents away. And I said, I don't want to scare you away. I want to tell you that every penny was worth it. Every single penny. So I do believe that's a reason to celebrate. However, the bigger reason to celebrate is that we can see the influence that the faculty and staff has had on the lives of our children. We are so thankful for having had the opportunity to send our children to ACS because without a doubt, it was the most awesome school for them to attend. If you are a new family to ACS or one that has been here for many years, I pray you feel the same way. The PTF has a little gift for each child who has been here for the past nine years. And I'd like to say, I'm going to call you up and give it to you, and I do pray that in four years at Baccalaureate, we will be able to call you up again and we can say that you've been here kindergarten through 12th grade. So first we have Gabriella Goodwin. Oh wait. Oh no. I'm sorry. That's not right. I'm so sorry. I gave the wrong words. It's those. Sorry, Gabrielle, I know you've been here for a while, but I don't think it's been since kindergarten. Am I correct? Okay. 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 Alexa Anjahar. Angela Awad. Victoria Dade. Amelia Deanna, um, okay. some of them are a little masculine than others, so if you want to trade, you can, okay. Uh, Marley O'Dell, Caden Kim, Austin Salcedo, Graham Schlemo, Elijah Weiler and Anya Welsh. Okay, you have the certificate for the October scholarship.
I have to give these out. Okay. All right. This next um, group of awards is for the PTF scholarship. Each year we give a $450 scholarship for the first place winner, a uh, $200, no, I'm sorry, a $400 for the first place, $250 for the second, and $100 for the third. And that is applied to their tuition for the coming year. This year we had 15 children write essays. Now that's the most we have ever had and it made it very difficult to judge because they were just so well written and so well thought out that it really took a lot of time to rank them. What we do is we um, cross out their names so nobody knows who they're reading and then we rank them 1 through 15. So each person on the executive board that's doing it ranks each essay 1 through 15. I do not participate because I'm the one who then matches it up with the meme. So I can say that it was extremely close for most of you. So what the PTF decided to do this year was, for those of you who wrote the essay, we wanted to give you a little gift because it was such an encouragement to us that you took the time to do that and to participate. Now this is not a participation award because I don't believe in them, but I just think that we wanted to let you know how important it is for you to continue writing throughout your high school career and how well each one of you did. So I'm going to call you up, and this is not the winners yet, this is a gift to each of you. Gabriella Goodwin. Yeah. Michael Marker. <laughs> Benjamin Smith. Jericho Thomas, Adley Palermo, Michaela Cubbage, Lydia McCarthy, Ava Barbario, Caden Kim, Layla Kent, Riley Murphy, David O'Donnell, Justin Basso, Angela Awad, and Gianna Flynn. And I have to say again that just to see this type of participation was really encouraging to us and to see the level of their writing is a testament to their teachers here. Okay, we had a tie for third place this year. So each of these individuals will be receiving a $100 scholarship towards their tuition. Third place parent-teacher fellowship scholarship goes to Benjamin Smith. <laughs> tie for third place goes to Caden Kim. Okay, second place scholarship of, uh, gosh, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting, uh, $250 goes to Jericho Thomas. And a first place scholarship of $400 goes to Gabriella Goodwin. Now it, is it on? 
<laughs> now it is time to recognize each student that has completed their middle school years and is moving on to high school next year. As they are announced, the students will come to the front of the stage to receive their promotion certificate from Chief School Administrator Karen Oblin, and they will pose in case you wish to take a picture. Marcus Anderson. Alexis Andhar. Angela Awad. A Ava Barbario. Justin Basso. Logan Benson. Hazel Bergen. Elijah Casey. Robert Sasari. John Cook. Calvin Costello. Sophia Costello. Michaela Cubbage. Victoria Dade. Amelia Deanna. Sonia Elliott, who is not here tonight. Noah Engel. Gianna Flynn. Gabriella Goodwin. Isaac Kelly. Layla Kent. Kaden Kim. Michael Marker. Lydia McCarthy. Tara McCorkle. Wow. 
Riley Murphy. Madeline Neal. <laughs> Molly O'Dell. <laughs> David O'Donnell. Dariana Ortiz. Adley Palermo. Elliot Parker. Eric Preissner. <laughs> Sophia Puglisi. <laughs> Austin Salcedo. Kayla Schenk. <laughs> Graham Schlemmo. Skylar Shivers. <laughs> Benjamin Smith. Jericho Thomas. Stephanie Valdez. Elijah Weiler. Anya Welsh. Chloe Raymond. <laughs> Music. Music. Yeah, I hope they have the right bunch the lights on the order. Do they get one, this mic too? Yeah.
Gonzalez. At this time, we will have some special music prepared by the 8th graders and the worship team for middle school. ago we call, we began calling this a blessing ceremony because that is our heart's desire is to actually bless the students as they have come all the way through middle school and they are ready to go forward into high school so we want to do a blessing over them so this time mrs amy parker is going to come forward again <laughs> and we've asked her to lead the blessing over the students I'm listening through without crying. <laughs> um, 
middle school faculty, would you please come and join me? Board members, administration, would you come and just stand with them as we pray a blessing and a, a commissioning over these students? Um, any of our board members, don't be shy. All of our faculty, our staff, administration, please just come in and kind of let's gather around them and pray over them, and I'm going to make it through without crying. You on over. <laughs> Would you please join us as we pray for these young men and women? <sighs> Heavenly Father, you are so gracious. You are so amazing. Each one of these students is here not by chance, not by accident but for your divine purpose. God, you have placed every one of them and their families in this school for a reason. And Father, it has been a joy to watch them as they've grown into the young men and women that you are calling them to be. Father, I pray right now over these students. God, a hand of protection. Lord, a spirit of wisdom, of boldness. Lord, that if they remain here, that you use them as a light in our school to shine, that they would begin to build a spiritual climate in the upper school, Lord, the likes of which we may have not seen in the past, that do a new thing, Lord. Those who are leaving, God, I pray that your spirit will go out with them, that they would be your light out into the communities, God, that they would take the lessons that they've learned here, God, that you would use them wherever their feet land, in their communities, in their schools, in their churches, and in their homes to spread your light, your love, your word, your truth. God, I pray that you would draw each one of their hearts into a deeper and closer relationship with you. Because apart from you, Father, we can do nothing. Lord, I am so thankful for the opportunity to work with staff members and faculty who love these children with the love that you have given. Lord, I pray that the students go. As they go, they feel that love, Father. Give them a restful summer. Help them to return for their high school years with a renewed sense of purpose and a renewed determination, Father. We put them in your hands and cannot wait to see what you are going to do in their lives. In your name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. So I just have a few closing remarks before we get to celebrate this evening together. Um, I want to take this time to give you an opportunity to show your uh, appreciation to some of the real heroes of bringing them here tonight, and that is the faculty and staff. We've been growing as a school, and this is one of the largest groups that we've had in eighth grade in many years. And I can tell you even watching them, I'm excited about all of you coming into the high school years. Every now and then we get a class that just has so much passion and so, much, so many gifts to bring. And it's often a great class. And I see the heart of that in, in them. Yes. They do typical mindless middle school things. We know that happens, but they're growing every step of the way. And I've seen a lot of growth individually in them. I've seen some acknowledgement of the road that they have to go yet, but I've seen a lot of passion. Passion for God, passion for each other, and passion to, to make some changes even going forward into the high school. So I'm excited to see that. Our theme verse for this year, as you heard earlier, was Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. And that tells us that the one who trusts in the Lord is blessed. Being deeply rooted means your leaves are always green and you're always producing fruit. When you're in eighth grade, those words sound kind of lofty. So this year, but although we focused on getting deeper, 
getting closer to God, knowing him better, and letting our faith deepen. So when the world becomes confusing and temptations are there, we stand on solid ground. That's what's important for us to remember. No matter where you go to high school, you'll grow in knowledge in a lot of different areas. But always remember that the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So you can have all the knowledge that you want, but without that understanding, that deep root with God, it's knowledge. And what wisdom is, is knowing what to do with that knowledge. So wherever you go, I pray you will dig deeper into God's word to grow in wisdom as well as knowledge. Then you trust him more when you're faced with choices and you, you dig your roots deep. You understand how to move forward. I know it's confusing out there. There are a lot of mixed messages out there. It takes wisdom, God's wisdom, to know how to walk, how to move forward, how to make the right decisions. Trust it in with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Sometimes my understanding is not right. And I know how hard it is. So dig in deeper. We want you to remember your time at ACS with all the blessings that there are and to move forward into new adventures and challenges being blessed. We know you've learned the truth of the Lord and the importance of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray your years ahead will be blessed with times of seeking God, his way, his truth, and standing in firm in what you've learned. At this time, I'm going to ask Riley Murphy to come forward, and he's going to close us in prayer. Um, I do want to mention, if the students told you, it is correct. Today is their last day of school. Okay, so they are permitted and encouraged to come tomorrow because we are going to have a fun event outside. We call it the end. We're going to have a chapel and then the end event outside with ice cream and other food and activities and competitions. So they're welcome to come, but no, they're not required to be here, just so you know that. I told them that, but I want to make sure you know it too. At the end of the prayer... Um, the students will lead through the center aisle. They're going to go down along the side there. And then we ask you to just remain seated until they all get all the way over there. And then you can go and meet them, celebrate, and enjoy some of the refreshments that we have for you tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Rally Murphy. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being, for being a gracious and loving God. You have shown us so much mercy throughout this year of school. Thank you for all the wonderful teachers here that desire to drive our students towards you. I pray for our teachers who have devoted their time so that we, their students, may have a good education and one that is grounded on a Christian lifestyle. We will give our teachers peace and rest this summer and refresh them before they begin a new season of such hard work. God, help us students take the examples of our teachers and parents and put what they have taught us into practice this summer. Turn our hearts to you that we may be lights for you in all we do and say. Thank you for all the things you have given us and promised to give through the years to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, students, you may stand. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight.
قربانی خوبی نہیں 